channel fanatics know what I'm talking about. This is a comment with a problem in it uh, posed, I think, at uh, a very, very popular math channel on YouTube. And again, that's very, very common for people just to drop in a comment with a, a question that's different than the topic that the video is actually presenting. And I like this problem quite a bit. Um, I think it's something that can be solved with Lagrange multipliers, but I did it a different way, just based on inequalities and actually uh, new, just direct manipulation of inequalities. But we have a constraint right here. We have this constraint right here. You can read it it's right here. It's two times the quantity X cubed plus Y cubed plus Z cubed is equal to three times uh, the quantity X plus YZ uh, squared. Now we're, Given that information, we're actually supposed to find the maximum value here of uh, x plus y plus c. Okay, we're trying to max out x plus y plus c. Now, so it makes sense to produce some inequalities uh, that contain x plus y, z, and that's what that's what happens right here. Now, I'm kind of ashamed to admit this is a very, for me, it was a difficult equality, inequality to prove. It's based, I couldn't do it directly. When, when I expanded out x plus y plus z quantity cubed, I was unable to do it directly and I had to look up some results having to do with the Newton's power methods uh, related to uh, elementary symmetric polynomials. But it's kind of easy to believe that this would be true because this additional, it wouldn't be, if this three was gone, it would not be true, all right? If this three was gone, it would not be true because you have a lot of cross terms in the form X squared, Y, YZ squared, XZ squared, that kind of stuff. But this additional three turns out to make this equality hold. Now, notice that this is in the form. Let me uh, get the marker going here. If I can get that out. Uh, the, yeah, this is in the form. Uh, we'll just call it A is greater than or equal to uh, B times C, right? Okay, so call this object B and then call this object over here C. So it's in the form A is greater than or equal to B times C. Now, <clears throat> notice that we string together another inequality. Now, this inequality, again, was proved using Newton's formulas, I guess. And I didn't, it was, it was difficult for me. I couldn't do it directly, and I just had to trust the results, you know. So, but these two statements are indeed true. But notice that this guy right here, is just the B that we just referenced. So this is the B that's right up here. And so since this object right here is always greater than this product, which again is present right here, this the two, two inequalities imply this, which is very useful because now we have X plus Y plus Z going on, which is very, very handy, all right? We are, again, we're trying to find the maximum of this expression right here, x plus y plus z, right? We're trying to find that maximum. And so now we've got ourselves in a very nice position because we have x plus y plus z. And um, you can see that when you divide by three and multi divide by three and two, you get this, okay? And I'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute. But, but in any event, these two inequalities, call this inequality one, inequality two, imply this inequality, all right? Now, uh, right here, you can rewrite this given. It's written like this, but I wrote it in fractional form again by dividing by three and two uh, simultaneously, more or less. And so you get this truth, but you can see how nicely this is going to work out for us. You see, we'll be able to replace this with this. And I'm going to another screen, so I just want to make sure when you see the screen, we're going to simply put this object right there. And you can almost see it right now how it's going to work out. We're going to replace this object with this object right here and solve the inequality. So let's move along here. Uh, let me clear out these drawings. All right, now uh, let's see, let's go down. All right, now, uh, so I did what I told you I was gonna do, I replaced it. And notice that we can get to this very next step here by dividing through by X plus Y plus Z quantity squared, okay? If you divide this by X plus Y plus Z quantity squared, you just get one half and we, we keep, all of these are positive integers, okay? They are, these are positive integers. I didn't say that those are positive integers. And so, and then if you divide this out by laws of exponents, you have this nice condition, which results 
in this, okay? Uh, Z is less than or equal to 27 over two. Now again, Z had to be an integer. So we have to reject even attempting 13.5. So the next lowest integer would give you um, a 13. But notice that right here, I rewrote the given for you. If you substitute 13 in right here, you get uh, 169 over two, which is not an integer, right? Okay, so we can't work with that. So if we try 12, that's the one right underneath. You see, we always have that X plus Y plus Z is, is less than this, but it's sort of, a, I guess, slightly a crude upper bound. And so we've already shown that it doesn't work for 13, but it turns out the arithmetic verifies that it works for 12. All right, it turns out that three, four, and five, uh, the, you, you cube those, divide by three, it ends up being the same thing as 12 squared is equal to 72. And since that, since that meets the condition, it is the largest sum, and, and this is indeed the solution uh, to the equation. Y'all let me know what you think. I, I, I could not quite do it directly. I wanted to write out everything, but I had to rely on some intermediate results to establish those first two inequalities. Okay, hope you enjoyed.